going. Uh, my name is Justin Naylor. I've been the project manager on these potential Randall Mill roadway and uh, drainage improvements. Uh, listed on this site or on, on this uh, on this screen is the uh, Randall Mill uh, HROM project uh, webpage. This will have project updates on it. Uh, this screen shows a quick uh, snapshot of what it looks like today. Uh, there, this will be updated periodically throughout the project if it continues forward. Uh, it'll it'll have updated uh, schedules on it. It'll have updated uh, uh, project costs on it, as, as well as hosting uh, links for recorded uh, recordings of the of the of these presentations, as well as any upcoming meetings. And so this is just what the project website page looks like, and, and it will be updated uh, periodically. And so I work in the Transportation and Public Works Department. Uh, this project is being sponsored through the Stormwater Management Division. Uh, through the hazardous roadway overtopping mitigation program. And, and the, the goal of this program is to increase life safety and, and uh, prevent uh, or, or reduce the flooding when it overtops the road and threatening life safety. We want to make sure that we're protecting people when it, during heavy rains uh, as much as we possibly can. Uh, currently, this project is in the project development phase, uh, which means that we're kind of in the early early planning phases. We're we're trying to understand the source of flooding, uh, which means we're trying to define an effective solution. Uh, we want to make sure that, we're, that what we're proposing is going to address the problem, uh, that it's affordable, as in it's going to fit within all of the all of the budget parameters that we have, and that it's an acceptable uh, solution, uh, which means acceptable to the to the city, acceptable to the residents. Uh, that, that it works with the, the city master thoroughfare plan or active transportation plan, which we'll talk a little talk about a little bit later on. Uh, and we, as, as a government entity, while we may ask for, while we may require permits of you as a as a resident who is uh, doing certain projects, we have certain permits that we would have to get from the federal government. Usually, the Army U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, in this type of work, especially when we're working around the creeks. And we just want to make sure that we have a really good handle on on how the community feels about it and gather any uh, community feedback. And that's one of the purposes of this meeting is so that we can gather that feedback. So the need for this project came out because we've we've looked at about 400 or over 400 crossings throughout the city. And uh, these two crossings that we're looking at addressing uh, are, have risen to the heights of to, to the high side of our of our scale. We've got uh, one of them ranked at number 13 and the other one ranked at number 31 uh, within those 400 hazardous locations. Um, we have four known high water rescues and 22 other reports of overtopping. So this really brings up the need that we need to, uh, the, the need for public improvement uh, to increase the, the safety here. Uh, so just another another view here. Uh, the two dots on either end represent roughly the, the limits of what we're looking at. Uh, the stars there represent where the crossings are today. And uh, the, the blue and, and then the blue and red hatching, those all represent what's called the FEMA regulatory floodplain. And uh, those those are engineering estimates of, of about how how wide the floodplain might get during heavy rain events, what might what we call the hundred year uh, storm event. So, as, as you can see, the floodplain is fairly wide. And for those of you who, who who live around there and drive this area pretty regularly, you know that those culverts that are underneath the roadway are very small. Uh, so, here's an image of of the western crossing. This is the one that's just west of Williams Road. Uh, if you'll notice in the images, uh, there's there are these flashers on either side of the crossing. And it's a good time now to kind of point out that when those flashers are on, that indicates that there's a high probability that there's water over the roadway. So we want to make sure that I want to make sure to take the time to tell you if you see those flashing uh, to turn around and, and, and don't enter into a flooded roadway. It, it's a it's hazardous and it could result in in very serious consequences. And so we, we want to I just wanted to make sure to point that out while we're on the on, uh, while we're looking at these. And then here's the other crossing. Uh, this is right next to Mallard Cove Park. Uh, this is just uh, to the east of Williams Road. And Mallard Cove Park in this bottom image is, this is the driveway into Mallard Cove Park. And this is Williams Road up here. 
uh, one of the residents in there in the area, Miss Mayo, she was was kind enough to provide me with some photos of what the flooding has looked like. Uh, this is a photo from her driveway, and Randall Mill Road is out there in the middle, uh, completely underwater. You can see behind these trees this guardrail, and so the, the water is about you know 12 to 18 inches above the roadway. And so just, just kind of showing, you know, that, that our, our assessment that this is a very hazardous location. Uh, it can be backed up with, with, with the experience of the residents in the area. So since we're looking at making some improvements to address that life safety concern from those culverts, you know, we, we have these improvement needs on the right side of this balance and factors that are going to be impacted because of making those improvement needs. So we need to reduce the overtopping. We need to place Randall Mill above the floodplain, which is gonna keep it uh, dry during the heavy rain event. And we need to improve the road safety and, and we wanna look at to make sure that we're improving the roadway capacity uh, through, through the MTP or the master thoroughfare plan. That's what the MTP stands for there. And so the factors that are, that are impacted by making these improvements are trees, uh, how much land is available to, to make these improvements, uh, so how much would have to be acquired in the future, uh, adverse impacts to the floodplain. We want to make sure that we're not uh, creating any adverse effects uh, to, to flooding with our projects. And, and then permitting requirements, like, like I talked about, you know, there, there are some things that might make sense from, uh, from a, we can do maybe move some things around, but if we have to get a permit uh, from the government or from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, that's going to add a substantial amount of cost and time to it, uh, which may make the project infeasible. So these are all things that we're going to, that we have to balance when we're looking at this. Uh, so what, I'm, what these next few slides are going to be, they're going to kind of roll us through what we're currently looking at with our, with our schematic drawing. Um, so as you can see, you have Williams Road kind of centered in the picture here with Randall Mill here. Uh, Mallard Cove subdivision to the east and Mallard Cove Park also kind of centered in the area. And this is the private driveway into that Texas bit uh, asphalt plant. So this is, uh, this is kind of what we're showing for the roadway layups and extent. So you can see we're going to tie in over here on the west and tie in over here on the east. So one of the first things that would be constructed if this project were to move forward uh, would be a new culvert crossing where Williams Road would be extended to the north. Uh, this culvert crossing would be built to current standards, able to pass uh, all of the water that's, that's coming to it in, during the 100-year event under the roadway as opposed to allowing it like it does today to go over the roadway. Uh, then there would be some drainage uh, facilities installed within the roadway to, to make sure that everything drains properly uh, in, in the roadway because it'll have a curb and gutter section as opposed to a uh, bar ditch section, which is what's out there today. And then this is the limits of the paving that we're looking at. This kind of lighter gray is what we're calling, uh, we're calling for concrete pavement right now. And then these ends here, and uh, these are asphalt transitions to get to transition back to the existing pavement. Uh, one question that you're probably going to have is, well, what, what section are we going to build today? Uh, what we're looking at with this project, and we're still coordinating with our uh, transportation planning folks to make sure that what we're coordinating, what we're going to build with this project uh, will work uh, not only in the interim and, and serve as an improvement in the interim, but also uh, work with minimal uh, rework for a future section that, that would uh, handle more uh, traffic in the area. Uh, so what we're looking at is a uh, one lane in each direction with a center turn lane uh, through, throughout this uh, project. And that center turn lane is going to allow for those protect or, or for those left turns to take place at Trinity as you're coming uh, to the east and uh, onto Williams Road once you're coming from uh, from the from the east. Also, a left turn into Flyaway will also allow for the traffic to get into this uh, left turn lane for into it going into the private driveway. And so that's going to provide some some additional benefit as far as helping keeping traffic flowing so that nobody's having to. A stop to make those left turns to let oncoming traffic get through, get past first. 
And so lastly, after the roadway is all in and all the connections are done, we'd be removing the Randall Mill, uh, the current Randall Mill paving uh, that's out there. And, and so again, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure to, you know, that, that what we're trying to do with this project is we're trying to balance all of these factors to, you know, reduce the overtopping, improve the safety of the area, uh, improve the roadway capacity, and, and, and managing, you know, any permits that are, that are going to have to be required, managing right of way, managing tree preservation as best as we can. And so that, that's how we, that's one of the ways that we came to this particular uh, potential solution. Uh, so, you know, if, if this project were to move forward, uh, you know, some of the benefits, it would reduce random mill overtopping uh, likelihood. It'll improve the road safety as, as far as, you know, it'll have the left turn, left turn lanes, which is going to pull the, that stopping traffic out into the left turn lane. Uh, it'll be an improved pavement section as far as it'll be concrete paving for most of it with asphalt transitions on the ends. Um, and so if this project does move forward, uh, our anticipated milestones right now are to complete design in spring of 2023 uh, with bidding and awarding to take place in fall of 2023. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you notice that there's a little bit of a gap there of that summer, those summer months in there. Uh, and, and that's really to kind of take account for uh, any right of way acquisition. That process is usually a little bit separate and outside of design and it can take a little bit longer. And so that, that's where, where that buffer comes in. Um, and assuming it's continuing through construction would potentially start in winter of 2023 and 2024 uh, with construction to complete in spring of 2024. Oh, I apologize. That is, uh, I forgot to move that. That's supposed to be uh, spring of 2025. I, I, I apologize about that. that that's incorrect. The spring of 2025 is what that should say. Um, Funding, uh, our current estimates are it's about a $10 million project and it's stormwater revenue bond funded, um, now, which is different than the transportation bond. Uh, this is this is money that was using the stormwater impact fees uh, to leverage, uh, to, to issue debt, to get a large slug of funds to take care of a lot, uh, you know, several larger projects all at once. And so that's where this funding comes from. And with that, uh, I'll open it up to any questions. Uh, Michael Crenshaw, uh, and I, I will, since we do have a few call-in users, I'll, I'll go and read out my uh, contact information so that if anybody has any questions, uh, they can contact me. Uh, my phone number is 817-392-7953. And my email address is justin.naylor, that's N as in Nancy, A-Y-L-O-R, at fortworthtexas.gov. Uh, so feel free to give me a call or, or shoot me an email if you have any other questions uh, that, that come up after this. Uh, Michael Crenshaw, do we have any in the chat at this time? I don't see any currently that are that have uh, posted any questions. If anyone has any they would like to, you can post it in the chat on the right side of the screen. Just hit the little chat button, tap the question in, and we can get it through there. And there were a few others on... Justin, if you want to go through that list, looking down the list of attendees. Yeah. Uh, I see a Sue on here. Sue, if you'd like to unmute yourself, you're, you're welcome to do so if you have any questions. No, I don't have any questions. I was just curious about what was going to go on here. Okay. But thank well, you. thank you. Thank, thank you for chiming in and, and, and tuning in and being involved. Uh, up next, I see an Angela. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that uh, uh, city is taking some um, actions to improve the rental mill. I wonder, because there's a new neighborhood is building, so um, that is before uh, you hit the uh, Williams. W will that 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 um, section also have left turn? 
So yes, we're currently showing the left turn to stop just before, or, or to allow a left turn into this new subdivision. Is that the one you're talking about? Yes. Kind of in this area. Okay, that's great. Because I think there will be a lot of neighbors, new neighbors coming out of that neighborhood. Yeah, I, I believe you're right. And so we, we do have that provided for there. Okay. And how about uh, the the turn towards the current, um, there's a subdivision that have the um, trailers, trailer houses. There, there's no turn to, to that subdivision. I'm not sure I, I know which one you're talking about. I think there's one just into the far west, uh, right after you get off of 820. Yes. Okay. We, we wouldn't be doing anything in front of that area. Okay. At, at least not with this project. Okay. So, so this project is a turn stop and fly away uh, road. Right, right. So we, we would allow, we would have the left turn lane uh, stopping here at flyaway. So the okay. folks going into that flyaway lane would have the, the, the left turn lane available. Sounds good. It's an improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mayo, I see you're on. Do you, you have anything you'd like to, to ask about or, or any comments? Uh, Mr. Naylor, uh, sorry. We, I guess we're just curious to see the final, what our driveway is going to look at like in the end. Right. And, and, and so as you and I had talked, I think what we'd what we had last left it at, it would be a, it wouldn't be, a, you know, it wouldn't be very wide. There, there wouldn't be the, the hammerhead that we talked about. Yeah. It would be elevated to roughly to where your gate is. Yeah. Um, and, and it would connect over here off of Williams. Yeah. That's what I thought. I just, I guess my husband would like to see it on paper. <laughs> we kind of meshed the two. You gave me two options and we kind of meshed them together and. I guess he'd just like to see the final, what it would definitely look like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd be happy to send you our current uh, schematic. Uh, obviously, there, there are going to be a few probably minor tweaks as, as they get in the final design. Uh, sure. You know, if, if it moves forward, but but I'd be happy to send you what we have now, if, that, if that's what you're after. Yeah, that'd be great. And that's all. I don't, I don't really have any more questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, Justin, what would be next steps um, from this meeting? Well, actually, we have uh, Ms. Smith on the line as well, but I didn't get to, hadn't go, quite gotten to yet. Oh, hi. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? Oh, doing well. You have any questions or comments? I have a question if there's, is there no other way to just enlarge the current bridges or the areas where the flooding is now without having to create a whole new road? And, and so we, we did look at that um, early on, but some of the concerns of doing that are, you know, especially as you're kind of running right next to the creek and you're trying to expand the roadway to make it a little bit wider. Uh, that, that puts us kind of working in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers area. Um, th there's not really room for a future uh, uh, for a future wider section in its current alignment. Uh, because if, if the roadway needs to be wider for capacity sake, you know, for, for traffic sake, then, then it's not going to, there's not enough room with, with the channel right next to the roadway as it is today. So we, we did look at that. Uh, also, there were some elevation concerns uh, about trying being able to make it all tie in well. And, and then there were some hydraulic impacts, if I remember correctly, that that made it to where we couldn't really do that. Rather than we'd be we'd be having some adverse impacts by just enlarging the culverts where they are. Yeah. And there's what about dredging as an option? 
are you talking about you know lowering the channel yeah yeah just dredging what's existing well it, it it's it's still the issue of the, you know the you know, part part of it is we wouldn't really be able to get the water surface low enough to get it underneath the roadway uh, by, by lowering the the flow line because the channel still would have to drain. Mm -hmm. uh, that that would be a pretty much a, a much larger project that that really wouldn't be very feasible. Uh, from from a that that would certainly put us in in the land of having to do core permits, which are very costly and very uh, time consuming. So dredging the existing channels is not an option. Right. And this is this is Greg Simmons. I'm in Stormwater too. Just I mean, I, I would think Justin or Mike chime in if I'm wrong, but I mean you can't just lower it there. This water's all trying to flow to the river. And so if you lower it there, it's just gonna sit there. It won't, you know, it's gotta it's gotta keep flowing all the way to the river. So um one of you H and H guys could probably explain that a lot better than me. Right. So if we were to remove all the dirt through this area to make this lower, we wouldn't be able to stop just here. We would have to continue it all the way down to basically the Trinity River in order to get that to drain out to lower the water enough to get it underneath the roadway. Okay. I just think that, I don't know, building a whole road seems like an expense, major expense and undertaking. Yeah, it, yeah it is I, a, I, it's a very expensive project, but again, given, you know, compared to a lot of other projects we do around here, I mean, the level of hazard at this location definitely warrants that kind of thing. And unfortunately, with a lot of drainage projects, there's no cheap way to fix a lot of them. And so the relocating of the road here again is far and away the most cost effective and given the level of hazard, uh, it definitely warrants it in our program priorities. Okay, would you have to purchase additional land or do y'all already have it for the road? For this project? Yes. Uh, so this is all parkland right now. So this would be part of a parkland conversion. Okay. Um, this we've worked, we've spoken with the, this property owner, uh, which is the, the oil and gas operator. So we, we would have to purchase this right of way. Uh, we'd have to purchase some additional right of way, uh, over here as well. Okay. And, and then there'd be a handful of easements of, uh, that would be associated with the project. And that's already in the cost estimate, right? Justin that you gave before. Yes. And then the con plant is okay with. The driveway change, or do you know Th this plant? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We we've spoken with the the owner of Texas bit, and and he didn't uh, seem to offer any. He, he didn't. He wasn't upset, or he he seemed to supportive of, of the project. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is Linda Young in TPW, and with regard to the new roadway. That relocation was eventually going to take place at, at some point in time to comply with the master thoroughfare plan that has been adopted. So we're kind of just getting ahead of that. And anything that we might do now in, in this particular location, you know, might have to be torn out or redone when the a new roadway is installed installed if we weren't doing it ourselves at this point in time. Okay. All right, thank you. The, 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 those are all great questions, and I, I really appreciate your your thinking about it and your and your uh, your input on this. It's my pleasure. I had one more question. Have you possibly looked to see if we're going to have to take down any large trees? Uh, that that'll be in the next phase. You know, getting a tree tree survey to see exactly what trees are out there uh, to to see which ones we'll, what we'll need to mitigate for. Okay. Uh, we, we do have a rough cost estimate on what we're looking at, uh, but but we we do not have an exact detail of, of 
which trees are going to be coming out. Okay, because I know there's some large ones over there. I just didn't know if they were going to be in the line of sight of the street or not. Right. Right, but that that, that would be in the next phase, and and I would anticipate probably an update on that at the next uh, community meeting. Uh, so, you know, assuming this project moves forward, uh, some of the next steps that you would see would be uh, potentially you would see the park conversion and a MTP revision. Uh, the, the MTP revision has to follow with the parks conversion because this is all parkland. So since we're, we're having to convert some of the parkland, that's triggering the need to do the MTP revision. Uh, also during that process, we'll be working with our transportation planning team uh, to make sure that we set up the correct uh, final section uh, within that MTP revision. Uh, and then following that, you would also be seeing uh, community meetings at the 60% set of plans. So when we've got a little bit more detail on the plans, uh, Ms. Mayo, that's when you'd probably be, you should expect to see some more detail on what that would look like around your driveway, especially. Um, and then another community meeting at the 90% set of plans. And then a final community meeting at uh, once we have a contractor on board for a pre-construction conference. So uh, that would be a good time for the, the contractor to be able to answer some of the phasing questions that you might have as far as, well, well how long is the road going to be closed? If it's going to be closed, how long are the lanes going to be shut down? Uh, that, at that time, that's when they're going to have a lot more of that information. Uh, so, so we'll be coming back to you at, at these various stages just to let you know uh, the, the progress of the of the project if it's continuing forward. Um, uh, so th those would really be kind of the next things that you would that you would be seeing. Like in the next few months. Uh, so let me go to our anticipated schedule okay. again. Uh, so we're anticipating completing design in the spring of 2023, so about a year. So yeah, you would probably be seeing them every every th three months or so, I would guess. Okay. Uh, now, now the uh, I'm I'm going to have to double check on on the MTP and the park revision. Those are going to be those would be council action items. So those would also be at, at the city council, uh, open for public comment. Uh, just so that you're aware of those. I, I, they're not going to be set up like this. They'll be set up in those uh, uh, council meetings. That's correct. But then, thank you. Uh, this is, this uh, is Mary Elliott with the transportation planning group. And yes, the MTP would need to go to council. So it would have a public hearing there. And what, um, and Justin said was correct that we would want to change the section to reflect, um, you know, the section for that area and, um, you know, at the same time, you know, address um, the park conversion. Thank you, Mary. So that, that's all that's all the information that I have moving forward. If if, uh, if anybody else had anything come to their mind, you know, feel free to chime in. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll leave. I'll go back to my contact information again. So if, if you wanted to take a picture of that or write it down, uh, feel free to to do so so that you can um, contact me. Hey, Justin, uh, there, is a, there is one more address. I'm, in, I'm sorry, there is one more question in the um, chat box. And um, Mayo asked if oh, oh, address is changing. Uh, I have not found that out yet. Uh, I'll, I will work on that in the coming weeks to see if we can get an idea of what that looks like. Uh, I'll have to double check to see. Uh, what that process would be if it does change. So I'll, I'll, I'll circle back with you on that. And I just wanted to mention too that um, those of you who've dealt with Council Member Bibbins, you know that she's a big advocate for improvements in this area and, and very aware of what's going on. And, and I know that her office will be very much, you know, involved in tracking this whole thing as it goes forward. So uh, you feel free to provide any input to them that you want, but um, this is definitely something she's very aware of and supportive of as well.
Thank you, Greg. And so with that, I think we're about done. Uh, so again, um, um, email and, and phone calls are, I'm, I'm available uh, as you need. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting. Thank you all so much for your time and your input. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you, Justin. Thank you.